I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a veterinary dentist, and today we're going to look at crown amputation for treating type 2 tooth resorption in a maxillary canine tooth in a cat. You can see here that we have the left maxillary canine tooth. We have some vestibular bone expansion above the region where the gingiva has grown into the defect, which has almost destroyed the entire crown of this uh, maxillary canine tooth. Radiographically, we can see tooth resorption is significant and the apical portion up into the crown is completely destroyed. So our incision is going to start here at the third premolar. We're going to extend that rostrally into the defect and then we're going to come around with a vertical releasing incision <clears throat> to meet that and then uh, follow that with elevation until we get to the point where we've got exposure of that vestibular bone which we're going to progress to remove with a burr, specifically a cross-cut tapered fissure burr. You can see here we're using the small end of a feline periosteal elevator and we're working the perimeter initially. We don't want to put a lot of pressure a lot of focus on one area we want to go around the whole perimeter of that removing that attached gingiva to minimize the possibility of causing problems with devitalizing that flap due to puncture and if we put too much pressure in one spot <clears throat> the pressure on either side of that elevator is significant unless there's a perimeter that's been elevated already and it's likely that that could happen so you see here very quickly, we've got a nice flap started. Then we're going to come back with our larger end of this periosteal elevator, removing that unattached gingiva off of the bone. Then we use the periosteal elevator to retract that tissue. And now we're using that cross cut just to kind of paint away the bone to see where the interface is. We want to make sure that we can visualize where the bone has replaced the tooth root, and then based on that visualization, make an incision with that cross cut around the bone interface above, uh, I'm sorry, apical to the bone interface and the, and the tooth and leave nothing but bone there and then come back and smooth that with a diamond football burr. So here we are just kind of making an incision into the bone with the cross cut at that area where there is nothing but bone. The tooth is gone. We can visually see that the interface is coronal to where we're cutting. Now we're going to touch, test that to see if we can dislodge that section of the crown. We still need to do a little work here. So we'll go back and we'll take a little bit more bone away until we get to the point where we can actually digitally uh, place our pressure and just kind of snap that off um, without having to get deeper uh, into the tissue to possibly uh, damage that uh, palatal mucosa. So here we're going to elevate a little bit more on the rostral aspect of the attached gingiva. Then we're going to come down here on the palatal aspect and overcome that little ridge that's almost vertical and allow room for our sutures to be placed. We're going to be using 5 ot monocryl, which in uh, my practice is the suture of choice for cats, and we use a P3 needle generally. Here we're using the diamond football burr or tapered burr to take a little bit more of the bone away around that attached gingival, we're going to put those sutures and also smooth that out. <clears throat> and here's what the finished product looks like. You can see we've got a nice smooth interface there. And the sutures will start caudal moving rostral. And again, that's 5 watt monocryl. Very nice. Through the tissue, no drag at all, and not security is excellent with this suture. I'm 
multiple simple interrupted sutures with large bites. And we keep our patients very light throughout the entire procedure. We always do nerve blocks. We like to have a palpebral reflex. We like to have a swallowing reflex during the procedure, and very often we're able to achieve that. Had we seen that the tooth interface was more apical to where we did our excision, we would definitely want to go up as far apically as we need to to remove the tooth structure leaving just the bone. If we had a periodontal ligament space that we could see around that tooth root, then we would treat it exactly as we would in a regular extraction and extract the entire tooth root. There are cases when radiographically it appears that the entire apical one-third to two-thirds of that root is involved with type 2 resorption. However, there are cases where we can actually go up and start to paint away that bone and we find that indeed we can extract that whole tooth and the, t the uh, root in its entirety. So that's certainly an option in some of these cases, but um, not something that we see commonly. So there you have it. Thank you for watching.